Hello and welcome to our webinar of the month. Today we are talking about top SEO strategies to increase traffic to your design and remodeling site in 2022. The topics we're going to talk about today is the importance of search engine optimization or SEO, fundamentals of SEO, optimizing website for SEO, and top SEO techniques. One of the hardest parts about SEO is this fluidity. And that's that's something I talk to my clients about all the time is that it's hard to watch day to day. And we wouldn't even suggest you watch day to day because uh, the search engines and the algorithm is always moving. And so trying to be ahead of it is is hard, but it's vital as well. And this is one of the parts clients hate about SEO is that they believe that they could get an SEO, their website SEO one time and that's it. But the issue is, is that the algorithm, the search engine algorithm is forever changing. So what you did a few months ago, what you did last year may not be applicable today. So you always have to know what is happening with search engines and with, with that, and, and that'll help you to optimize your site the right way. So staying ahead of the latest trends can help you be on top of the competition. The importance of SEO, providing credibility is at the utmost. Search engines review you or they rank you based on how credible you are to other sources and how well the information is viewed by others that view your site. Okay, so when we talk about bringing traffic to your website, once you bring that traffic to the website, are they staying on your site? Are they clicking around seeing what's there or are they leaving with a high bounce rate? And you do not want to have a high bounce rate because what happens is if they come to your website and they leave immediately, that means that you have a high bounce rate. And so by not having a high bounce rate, that means the time on page is held. And it also helps with the credibility factor as well. And when you're offering a user experience, SEO, when done the right way, you're offering an experience that is second to none for your client. And one of the best ways to get visitors to stay on your website is by offering them an experience that they understand what's happening. Whatever they clicked on to get to your website, they find immediately. It's not confusing and they know where they want to go and you're driving them to a CTA of whatever it is, a call to action, whatever it is that you want them to do. Uh, giving insights into prospects. Google Analytics Google Search Console gives you a lot of information. So you can find out a lot about your ideal client or about who's visiting your website. It gives you a lot of information. It's almost it's almost information overload, but it helps you understand what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, and where you need to optimize. And SEO also helps to build awareness. So by having you seen in multiple places, whether that be in the map pack, whether that be in the organic search, or if you even run ads, by being in multiple spots for multiple keywords, now your end user or your ideal prospect is seeing you over and over again. And that helps to, in their mind, provide credibility to who you are. And they're more likely to click on your website, see who you are, see why you keep appearing over and over again, because obviously if the search engines think you're important, they want to see that as well. Okay. Normally there is a report done every year about SEO analysis. And we had, we had got this report from Conductor. If you want to have access to it, it's about a 30 page report. Let me know. I'll email it to you, but uh, we just have some highlights here so you can take a look. But when they looked at 2022, in review, they saw that 82% of the prospects that they interviewed had a positive view of SEO and the impact that it was having on the performance of their site or either from the end user or on finding the right sites that they were looking for. And you can see some of the other things, but there's a 50% positive impact from SEO and 
it, it has turned around because a few years ago, SEO was seen as a negative thing. Now it's becoming more of a positive thing because search is huge. Whether you're on Google, TikTok, Instagram, each of them have uh, their own type of search engine. Search in general is huge. So being one of the sites that are seen is vital for you growing your designer remodeling practice. So some of the other things they saw in some of the other things in, in the report, leaders in the industry, they, they saw paid search as number one and organic search as number seven. And then with SEO, number one was the organic search content, it was five, and then the web, it was organic search. So the discrepancy happens in where you see the leaders in industry, what they view as paid search, because it's easier for them to understand the ROI. I put X amount of money in, I get X amount of money back. So it's easier for them to understand where it's harder for them to understand SEO. It's harder when you pay a company monthly. It's hard for them to understand how to convert that into an ROI. But if you're working with the right company, CRO, conversion rate optimization, is an aspect of what they do. And so they're looking at every dollar put in and what that means for you in terms of lead generation or backing. So if you're not working with the right company that's actually showing you how to understand your ROI, you will ultimately view PPC, pay-per-click, Google ads, Facebook ads as the number one lead generation driver because you can see the apples to apples comparison. But knowing that for any company that you work with, make sure they do CRO conversion rate optimization to help you understand what that ROI for every dollar spent that you can track that. And there is a way to track that with all of the analytics out there you can track. This is something else they looked at is uh, when they had talked to different companies, like where they plan to spend their money. And from the research that they did, 50% said that SEO and content will be an increase this year over last year. And so that could be a lot of what's happening. I know you've been hearing a lot about chat, GPT. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the webinar, but that, that has been a topic that everybody is talking about right now. And that may be one of the drivers in terms of the content piece, but SEO ultimately, like I tell a lot of our clients long-term, SE, there are, there are a few marketing tactics out there that can beat SEO. Short term, there are some other avenues that you can go, but long term SEO is the best bang for your buck. SEO fundamentals. So let's talk about what this is. SEO or search engine optimization, a consist of actions, strategies, and practices that help your site improve its online visibility. It is search engine's way of deciding which websites deserve to rate higher than the rest. And there are three types of SEO. You have on-page, off-page, and technical SEO. On-page SEO is everything that happens on your site in terms of content that you create, the user experience, what's happening with the layout, all of that, where you have your CTAs, your call to actions, where the place of them is, that all helps you with time on page and that helps you to lower your bounce rate. Because like I just mentioned, if you have a high bounce rate, that's a negative. So you want to lower that. And there are a number of ways with on page. Off page or anything that happens to drive traffic to your site. And so that can be blogging off a site. That could be using social media with a link that drives them back to your site. That can be doing anything where you have any ads that are happening. Uh, if, if you do PPC pay-per-click, Google ads, Facebook ads, and you have an ad and it clicks and directs them to your website, whatever that is that is the off that happens off your site to drive them to, that's the off-page SEO. And then the technical SEO, this honestly should happen when your website is built. I find that a not, I find not enough website development companies do not do SEO at all. Or if they do it, they do it minimally. So when you have your website built or when you have a remodel 
or a redo of your website, SEO should be a part of that. So all of the images that you have should have alt tags. They should be reduced in size so they could be optimized for search, uh, everything uh, with the meta tags, meta descriptions, how the pages are named. All of this should be talked about when you're doing a new web design are you doing a remake of your of your site? SEO, the technical SEO part should have already been done, but we find a lot of times that's not done. We have to do more of that than, than we like. But make sure any type of website enhancements or anything that SEO is a part of it, and that will be the technical aspect of your SEO. Okay, so clustering. And topic clusters are the new type of content. So years ago, it used to be if you write blogs continually, that's all you really needed to do in terms of SEO content on page is to write blogs for your keywords. What's actually more helpful now is to do a content pillar page. And that covers a broad topic widely. So for instance, if you are doing a kitchen remodel, as opposed to having eight different blogs, one on flooring, countertops, kitchen cabinets, appliances, whatever that may be. If you did all that in one content pillar post, that is more beneficial than having eight to not eight to nine different blogs, because that one content piece has everything in it. And that's also increasing time on page. And that's having you viewed as the expert, as opposed to looking at all these different blog posts. There's one that may be 5,000 words long that has a lot of information, infographics, videos, other links in it to other aspects of your website or uh, links to uh, you may have manufacturers that you work with or whatever that may be. But by having that content piece, you're now viewed as the expert and that time on page to get through all of that content helps with lowering your bounce rate. And it's more content for the end user to consume. And it's more likely that in that long content piece, you're going to cover a lot of topics. You're going to go over a lot of keywords. So it's more likely that content piece is found in a lot of the smaller blogs. All right. So how does SEO work? So search engines send bots to websites on the internet to collect information, and that's how they index, index your site. And the algorithm gets to work analyzing it, and then they rank it based on a lot of different factors, but there are different areas that you have. So you have the paid search area, you have the maps area, and you have the organic listing area. So if you see number one in the graphic here, the PPC, usually when you do a search, you'll see all of the AD, what has AD, that means ad. So you're actually, so that's the Google AdWords that you're paying for, what we say PPC or pay-per-click. And so that's how you get to that area. And so the map listings, which is number two, that's looking at your local area. So that's a lot for local traffic. So if you're a local designer or a modeler and you want to get ranked locally, now you need to spend more time on, you know, the Google My Business area and enhancing that to get into the local search. And that's also an aspect of SEO, which helps with optimizing your website. And then number three is the, uh, what we're talking a lot about today is the organic search. And how do you end up in that top page for, you know, the keywords that you're looking to rank for. So this is just an overview of how SEO works. And when the bots crawl your site, they're looking for uh, instances that helps them determine if you're credible or not. And that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today. Okay. So you want to create to start, you want to create a Google My Business page or a or what they call now Google Business Profile. If you do not already have that, that is the foundation thing you need to do. Uh, I tell all of our clients or all the prospects we talk to, even if you don't do SEO, at least at a minimum, 
create your Google business profile and then update that at least a couple times a month, at least once a month with new images, new content, because it's like your social media platform for the search engines. And that's how you end up in the maps area is by optimizing your Google business profile. So making sure that you've claimed it and you've optimized it, you filled out every section is important. And if you need any help on that, uh, we have something to help you with that at the end. OK, so Google business profile, what used to be called Google My Business. All right. Schema markup. So. This is the technical aspect. This is a lot of what we talk about, technical SEO. This is the back end of your website. And this is what the bots that the search engine send out is actually looking for. Okay, so like I talked about with the pictures, with the images on your website, and this happens in a lot of design websites, whether it be interior design, home remodeling, architects, they have a lot of imagery that looks beautiful. But the images, if you if they aren't tagged correctly, the bots have no idea to know what that is because they do not read the pixels. They read text. So by having a description and alt tags for every image, now bots can read that and know what that image is about. So when you do a search, oftentimes you have it on all. If you put it on images, you have a chance for your images to be found even before your website is found. And so by optimizing that, that helps you in SEO and schema markup. Like I said, this is the technical aspect. And I just, you know, talked about the imagery, but that also gets into meta tags, meta descriptions, H1 tags. And I'm not going to get into all of the technical aspect, but that's all the back end. Like I said, you should have had completed when you had your website built. Or if not, when you do a remodel, you need to make sure that the website development company actually does technical SEO to make sure that the foundation of your site is there. All right. NAP information. This is name, address, phone number. OK, this needs to be the exact same everywhere. And so this is the basic SEO that happens with just about every SEO company I've seen is that this is one of the first things they will do is look at all of your citations over of the web, whether it be on uh, Yahoo, Google, Bing, Yellow Book, YP, Brown Book, all of these listings. There's a lot of them out there. They're going to look to make sure that wherever your name, address, and phone number is the exact same. Because if it's off in one place, that can hurt in terms of search. So we had a client that was off. They, they were on Main Street. In some of the listings, it had S-T-R-E-E-T. -E -E Others, it had S-T. That small change has the search engines not view you as the same business. They may view you as a different one, and that hurts you in terms of search. So going out there and make sure everywhere that you can be listed is the same across all listing services. OK. Creating a page for each of your services. This is something that a lot of designers that we found, they'll have a service page where they may outline, OK, this is what we do in terms of maybe consultations and maybe uh, bathroom remodels, maybe kitchen remodels, it may be developing a color board, whatever that is. They, they'll have it on that one page, but they don't have separate pages for each of the services. This actually helps you out because you have a page dedicated to that one service where you can really explain your process in it and differentiate yourself from other designers and remodelers in your area. Also, it helps you out because by having that page, now you're going to, in that explanation of the service, you're going to ultimately cover some of the keywords that you're looking for that you may not have been able to cover if it was just on one service page. And so now you're more likely to be found because you detailed out one of your service pages, whatever that service is, in depth, explained it. 
and you will ultimately cover keywords that you're looking for your end user to type in to find you. And with that service page, it's easier to update. So if you have a change in service, it's easier to update that page and, and add to it than trying to update an overall page that has every service on it. So having a service page, I know it's a little extra work, but it helps you long term. And if you're working with any SEO company, this should be an aspect of the strategy that they do for you. OK, so some of the techniques you need to look at in terms of SEO, one is developing content. This is uh, content is, as you'll hear in the SEO world and in the marketing world, content is king. It will always be there. There's go. So the like I had talked about how search engines work, they send the bots to your website to find content. So content, no matter what's happening, and like I said, we're going to talk about chat GPT in a minute, but no matter what happens with that, content will always be vital to SEO. So having content on your site is necessary. So some of the content development tips we have, and, and, and it helps to help boost engagement. If you have content that really showcases your business. It tells about your services, your unique selling proposition, and it defines your values. So you need to differentiate yourself from everybody else. And that content, as you create it, not making it generic, but actually writing it to your ideal client and writing it from the standpoint of who, who you are, what your company stands for, what your values are. That helps you attract the right type of traffic to your site. By having content that's developed for your site and not generically, now you improve the user experience because when an uh, end user or a homeowner is looking for a designer uh, in your area, if they're able to happen upon your site, whether it be through search or direct or however, if they're looking for exactly what you do and you explain it that way, now they know they're in the right place. And by having content, it increases the relevance and helps the search engines find you the right way. So some of the things you do not want to do is keyword stuffing. You do not want to do plagiarism. And just what the keyword stuffing is. So if you're looking to do more remodels and you do, and one of the services you really specialize in is bathroom remodels. If you have a page where bathroom uh, or models is every other word or is in every every other sentence, that's keyword stuffing. So you need to write naturally and not try to game the system because that's what a lot of SEO companies used to do in the old days is try to game the system and they got slapped. Another thing is plagiarism. Make sure that the content you write is authentic. This is where chat. GPT comes in a little bit too. Search engines are becoming smarter to identify if it's directly from chat GPT or from you. So using chat GPT can help cut down time to create the content. But at the same time, what you want to do, you want to look at that content, flush it out, edit it, optimize it, and make it your own. So where you may not have to create the content from scratch. Now, if you use chat GPT and they create the content. And now you can flush it out, use your own terminology, use your own mannerisms. So the content reads it your reads it your own. And so that way it's not plagiarized, it's your own content. And then irrelevancy. That's having content that is not interesting or not relevant to your ideal client. So for instance, if you like I talked about the bathroom model, if you say you do bathroom remodels, but then the end user comes to your site and you never talk about bathroom remodels. You talk about everything else other than that. You talk about uh, doing outdoor spaces. You talk about doing kitchen remodels. You talk about doing everything, but bathroom remodels, actually you're misleading the end user and it's irrelevant for what they're looking for. So making sure what you do in terms of the services, that's what is actually outlined on your site. Having firsthand topic experience, this is what I say what helps to differentiate you from everybody else and writing that way from the personal side. So like I say, 
using, even if you use a service like ChatGPT. And we uh, actually did a podcast on that. So if you can, on one of the projects you've done, explain the process that you went through working with the client, talking about what the initial consultation was like, what happened when you went to the showroom, what happened when you went through picking out the FF&E furniture fixture and, and you know equipment, what happened through the demolition process, what happened through uh, the remodel, and then at the end. So that process or whatever your process is, explaining that with an example client helps other end users or potential clients visualize your process compared to others, and that may attract them to you over anybody else. And that firsthand experience has people resonate with you on a different level than they might with another designer or model. And you have unique insights from your personal experience working with clients, working on their house or on their uh, condo, business, office, whatever it is. Working on that, those unique insights are unique to you and your process. What helps you stand out from other other designers and models in your area. So AI, and this is what I had talked about, you know, just a little bit. Chat GPT is huge. You really have to know how to use it to really get the benefits out of it. But where it helps you, it helps cut down the content writing aspect of having to create the idea, uh, write the write the content uh, from scratch. And it helps cut a lot of that time out where it gives you an outline or a playbook that you can now optimize and create and add in your personal voice to differentiate you from others. So using chat GPT the right way can help save time. But if you just use it out of the box, enter in the information and then have that on your website as is, you are in fear of plagiarism because you really haven't added in any of your own information. So using chat GPT can be helpful, but just make sure it helps you save time, but you're just not using it as a crutch to not do any content at all, okay? Long tail keywords. So with every algorithm update, Google has announced that it can now understand relevant subtopics of a specific keyword. So long tail keywords are, uh, for instance, if like I have an example here, best colors for outdoor kitchen. So whereas you may be, uh, or the end user may type in outdoor kitchen design or just outdoor kitchen or, uh, you know, anything like that by having a long-term keyword. So now if anybody types that in, best colors for outdoor kitchens, you know, and you talk about that in either in one of your blogs or if it's on or if it's in the content of your website, you're more likely to be found or pull up on the search engines because you talk about that specific long tail keyword. And these are keywords that are more buying intent because the end user or homeowner is looking for that specific keyword that's a lot of words together because they're looking for specific information. And if you have that on your site, now they're more likely to view you as an expert. And if they have a question or if they want to turn to have somebody do it, they're going to more likely use you because they read a lot of that information on your site. And it's going to help you attract more traffic qualify traffic to your site because the longer the keyword is, uh, the more likely it is for you to be found because shorter keywords like home remodelers, interior designers is is a harder keyword to rank for because everyone is going after that keyword. But even by adding in your area, home remodeler in Dallas, Texas, interior designer in Los Angeles, California. Just by adding in location, it helps to create that long tail. And now that differentiates you from anybody in Chicago or anybody in New York. Feature snippets is one of the SEO techniques that came out. I think uh, it was like 2020, 2021 when this came out. And this is the bulleted area 
that you'll often see for if you ask for a list. So if you have either content that has a list, so, so for instance, on how to find a designer for your next home model. And if you have a list of what those steps should be, that list has a chance to be one of the featured snippets because it ties into search that somebody types in that they're wanting to look for. This is a great way for you to create content that is relevant for your end user, that is not overwhelming. Because like I talked about with the, the content pillar piece, which is a long form content, that may be a 5,000 or more word blog or content piece. But even within there, you want to have snippets, like I said, where you can either have a list of whatever that is, or you can have infographics, video. But even if you have the whole piece, at the end, you may want to summarize the piece and do highlights. Or at the start of the piece, do like a table of content to show this is what you're, uh, you're going to talk about. And you can link that table to uh, certain sections of that piece. So if it's a long 5,000 word piece, obviously it's going to be a lot of scrolling. But at the top, you can have a list of this is what we're going to talk about. And when they click on it, it jumps right to that area. And so those snippets help you get, if anybody types in that information, it helps you get found. The EAT principle. So expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. This is one of the things that the search engines look for in your website. They want to know that your site offers expertise on the topic. It's an authority site in terms of others viewing your site that way and is trustworthy. So the information on their individuals, homeowners, end users can trust it. And so how do they determine a lot of that? By having links from reputable websites, BBB or any of those sites, one of the sites that I tell a lot of our designers to get a link from that's easy to get is, is, is your uh, Chamber of Commerce. If you're a member of your chamber, if you're a paying member, they should link to your website. And that's a link from a reputable site that the search engines view all chambers as reputable. Okay, so that's a reputable site. Any of the organizations that you in, whether that be the ASID, uh, whether that be the NKBA, NARI, AIA, any of these industry known organizations. If you're a paying member, you can ask if they can link back to your website. That's also a trust that the search engines now know that you're reputable, that you're you're in this industry, not fly by night. Okay. And so there are ways that you could get these things. Like I said, if you're paying members of these organizations, you can ask them if they can link back to your website. Oftentimes they do some organizations uh, do not, but it doesn't hurt to ask. If you do any type of SEO work, whether it's in-house or you hire an agency to do the work, one of the things you should do is find out locally what are the reputable sites locally that, that you need to either get links from or work with to get links to your site. And then uh, you could use uh, forms like Reddit, and all of those, there are reputable forms on there that can link back to your site. But even social media, uh, certain social media sites or anything like that. But there are a number of ways. But showing that you are reputable and you have links from these organizations help helps to show that your website is reputable in the search engine's eyes. Okay, Authentic product page reviews are, you could say, testimonial. So, this is also one of the things that helps you with uh, rankings is review. This is one of the things that uh, not a lot of clients we work with or other designers that I talk to do enough of is get testimonials from their clients. The best time to get those reviews and to get the testimonials is right after you have completed a project is because even if it's not a big reveal like you have on HGTV, the homeowner or the business owner or wherever it is actually happy to have their space back. 
and that's the best time to get reviews. So whether that be a review for the design that you did or what we're talking about on the page here for a product. So if you're a manufacturer and, and your product needs a review, this is also, this is heavily seen as one of the things you need to get. Reviews, whether they be for a product, whether it be a testimonial review for your service, getting those reviews is vital. Google brought in a couple of years ago where they're looking at the speed, the responsiveness, and then the visual stability of your site. What they're looking for, they're looking for how fast does your website look? And this goes back into imagery. A lot of designers have a lot of beautiful images, but they use the actual image, the high quality image, and they don't shrink it. So there are ways that you can shrink the image. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a few slides. But that's one thing you can look at. Do you have animation or uh, any videos that are happening on your site that can help slow the speed down? Looking at optimizing any of any of those type things help to speed up your website. And that's one of the things they look at. How responsive is your site? So is it mobile optimized? Nowadays, 80% over, actually over 80%, 90% of traffic starts on a mobile device. So your website needs to load first fast on a mobile device even before a desktop. So when you either do a new uh, website design or you do a remodel or remake of your website, make sure that you're doing mobile first, that you make sure that the mobile experience is optimized before the desktop because most search is going to stop, it's going to start on a mobile device and they're going to look there before they move over to desktop. If your site is not optimized for mobile and it looks bad on mobile nine times out of 10, the end user, the potential client, the homeowner, whoever that may be, will not go to your website on the computer to see it because they're going to automatically assume that it's not right. Visual images, uh, do, do they load correctly? Uh, is the image or is the color of the image off? Is the video off? All of that uh, plays into how they view. Some of the tools that you can look at, Google Search Console, you should have Google Search Console and Google Analytics on your website at a minimum. Those are two free tools that you can put on your site now. Helps you get organized with all of this stuff. Page Speed Insights, you can head to that site, which is also by Google. You could put in your website and it'll show how fast your site is and where the issues are and it'll help you to iron all that out. And then these are just some other options here as well. Okay. Mobile pages, like I talked about, where we had talked about the core vitals and optimization, making sure that your mobile pages read correctly and that the text, the if you have any videos, they play right, anything on that, that it loads correctly because SEO looks at mobile first. And so it's not just going to look at your website, but it's going to look at uh, the CSS or, or the code, the back end, how well is it optimized for mobile pages? And so you need to take a look at that as well, okay? User experience, this is vital now. What has happened over the last few years, the search engines have taken a hard look at user experience and what happens when a, when a user is, enters your site. Are they getting off the site fast, which I had talked about is high bounce rate. Are they clicking around and not finding what, they, what they're after? Are they having a hard time understanding what your site is about? This helps in search traffic and search engine and, and, and search results, okay? So by having a low bounce rate and having them spend time on your site and the amount of times they click through to different aspects of your site helps. So what ties into mobile are the user experience. One, mobile friendliness. Is, does your site on the desktop look the same as on your mobile device or is, or is it completely different? Now, there may be some changes from mobile to desktop, but it shouldn't be a, a complete apples to oranges uh, comparison. Okay, you should, when you look at the desktop, 
version and you look at the mobile version, you should understand this is the same company. This is the same designer remodeling client. I mean, the same designer remodeling business that in terms of the of the branding, layout, and all. Okay. Navigation, how easy or how hard is it to navigate the website? The harder you make it to navigate the site, the more likely that that user will leave. I'm sure we've all been to a website where it's hard to find what you're looking for or it's hard to click to the next page or it's hard to understand. If that happens in your designer remodeling site, nine times to 10, you will not see that client or you will not see that prospect again. How fast does the site site load? Is it interactive? And then the content on, on your site, is it quality? Is it of quality? All right. Image SEO, this is what I've been talking about throughout so far. Loading speed, and this is this happens a lot with designer remodeling sites. I'm an architect as well. We have an architecture site, and we, we understand you want to showcase your best products or your best projects. And you want to have all of the beautiful, beautiful imagery and, and showcase all of that, but you cannot do that at the expense of a slow website. Over 20% of the U.S. traffic happens in Google Images. So like I said, when you do a search, as opposed to doing all, click on images and see if any of, and see what images type of, so if you type in, Home, uh, if you type in interior designers, wherever you're at, wherever your location is, usually it's going to be on all and you'll see the organic search. Click to images and see what pulls up. See if your name or if your company pulls up. See if if the competition pulls up and see what pulls up. Is it the image of the owner? Is it the image of the office? Is it an image of the project? What is the image of? Okay, and so get an idea of what those images are and the type of images you, you need to have on your site and having them having a the high quality image is good, but not at the expense of the speed. So there are a number of things you could do to reduce. So we have two here, the tiny JPG, tiny PNG. You can place and upload your image into their site. And this is all free. You can upload your image into their site. And it and it reduces the size of the image. So if you had your project professionally photographed, which you should, by the way, take the raw image and upload it into this site or into one of these sites. So it can reduce the size, but it won't reduce the quality a mobile device or on desktop. Now you won't be able to you won't be able to print it out from your website, but that's not the purpose. If you need to print the images. You already have the hard copy. You already have the raw image from the professional photographer. But you're trying to shrink the size of the image so it's not bogging down and slowing down your website. So optimizing it in terms of size, but it does not hurt the quality of it. Just only if you print it out, like I said, but if you're viewing it, it does not hurt the quality. So making sure that all your images are optimized. Okay. Video content. This is one of the biggest things in SEO. Video is huge. 82% of content created globally expected to be from video content, okay? Video is more engaging than text and images, as we know, and more people are likely to stay on your site if you have video. Google rewards you for having video on your site, and one of the sites that they own is YouTube. So if you have any type of video, I would encourage you to put the video on YouTube and then link it on your site. So it you can play it on your website, but it's not hosted on your website. That way you're not, because if you have a lot of video on your site, we have a lot of video on our site. If you go to our site, we have a lot of training videos. We have a lot of uh, CEU videos from the NKBA. We have a lot of uh, how-to videos on marketing, all of that. And you'll see in the monthly webinars, this webinar here being recorded is going to be on our website, if not tomorrow by Friday. But you'll see the video is not actually hosted on our website. It's hosted on YouTube. So you could go to our YouTube channel and see all of our videos. But 
on our website, you can play it, but it's not hosted there bogging down the speed of our website, okay? So by incorporating video, it helps with the search engines. And if you're on any type of social media, TikTok and Instagram, if you do not have some type of video, you do not have the reach you used to have years ago. You don't. You do not have the reach you used to have a year a year ago, because Instagram completely changed their algorithm around video because of TikTok. TikTok was kicking their butt in terms of number of new users, in terms of time on page, in terms of uh, users using their platform and out because of video. So Instagram completely changed around because of that. So having video on your site helps you long term. And there's a number of ways that you can voice search optimization. This is one of the growing areas of search engine optimization. You have the things like Alexa, uh, Siri, any of those. So nowadays, you don't type in search. You say, Alexa, can you find me? Or Siri, what is the top or whatever that is. Making sure that the SEO on your site is optimized for voice. And there's a way to do this. And so any of the SEO companies that you're working with or any of the website companies you're working with, make sure that they're incorporating this in a lot of what they do. So when anybody says or talks about searching for one of the services that you do, your site pops up as opposed to not having it. Google Passage Ranking. In 2020, Google launched what they call passage ranking, where individual pages of on web pages can be ranked along with the whole page itself. This means Google can pull out sections from a page, even that even if that page is covering a different topic than anything else in the search engine ranking. What that is saying is like that long form content filler piece. Like I said, if you have a long piece where you have a lot of information, we we'll use the example of a kitchen remodel where you have the different aspects from the countertop, the flooring, the lighting, appliances, all of that. So if you had each of these areas in that piece, now they could pick out different areas. And so that's why we said this helps out because by having that long piece, now that helps with time on page. Making sure that the content is clear and you incorporate keywords that can help be found for all of this information. And then, like I talked about, thinking about the blogs in the old way, creating a blog for each different item or each different service or each different term or whatever it may be. You may want to think about now creating one content piece that covers the topic in depth, right? Backlinks, we had talked a little bit about this earlier on. When we talk about credibility and the EAT principle, making sure that you have good quality backlinks, like I said, from Chamber of Commerce, from the organizations, American Institute of Architects, American Society of Interior Designers, National Kitchen and Path Association, the National Association of the, of the Remodelers Industry, making sure you have association links back to your site at the national level and also at the chapter level. And then with the local businesses in your area that frequent you. So, for instance, you may have a local manufacturer that you work with. You may want to talk to them about doing a guest blog on your site that links back to your site. And they may want to have you do the same thing. But having that link from that manufacturer that ties in because that may draw quality traffic back to you. So a lot of those ideas, you have the online forms that you can use, like we talk about social media. You have a lot of those from Instagram groups, Facebook groups, all of those that, that can think back. And there are a number of ways that you can get backlinks. Data and analytics. This is the year that data is changing. I don't know how well you know what is happening, but in June, a lot is changing in terms of data, privacy, what's happening with user engagement in GA4. So we're saying somewhere within the summertime, June to August, September-ish, this will change. But GA4 is a big change in terms of Google Analytics. So the universal Google, Google Analytics will be going away. 
GA4 is going to be an update to that. It's going to track more and identify what are the patterns and trends in data. So it's going to be easier for businesses to spot opportunities and develop data-driven decisions. Okay. So this is going to help businesses understand all of the data because one of the complaints, like I talked about, you should have Google Analytics, Google Search Console on your website anyway. But one of the complaints I've heard is that it's just information overload, it's just so much information that the average designer remodeler does not know how to read and interpret a lot of that. This will be solved a lot with GA4 because it's going to condense a lot of that information and help you to make specific actions or changes to how you organize the content, lay it out, or do anything on your site to draw better quality traffic to your website. This is a good update that's happening. So if you haven't heard about it, this is something that you should talk to your internal team or the marketing agency or whatever who you're working with to get up to speed on how this may affect your website and search, all right? Google Maps listings, this is Google My Business or Google Business Profile, like I had talked about earlier in the slides. This is one that helps you get found on maps. And we have a guide here that we have on our website. It's a step-by-step -step guide for setting up your Google Business Profile. So go to this, if or you can reach out to me and I'll be happy to share this with you. But we developed this to help designers and remodelers get on Google Business Profile, because that's the basis of any type of SEO. Even if you can't pay right now to do any SEO, there are clients, we just manage their GNB. That's all we do is we just manage their, and it helps with their SEO. So at a minimum, you need to do Google Business Profile. And this is a free tool that you can set up everything. Now to manage it is going to take a little bit more of your time. But like I said, even if you update two, three times a month, or at least once a month, that's better than having to just sit there, okay? So like I said, head to this or reach out to me and I'll be happy to share. Also, we have this checklist here. It's a SEO checklist on everything. Well, just about, I'm gonna say everything because SEO is forever changing. Like I said, like I talked about earlier on, one of the complaints by a lot of business owners about how fluid it is and how it always changes. But as of now, this is a checklist to help you understand what you need to do in terms of the SEO basics, the keyword, the technical side, the on page and off page, what you need to look at on your in your own site. Okay. So that was just a quick overview of what's happening in SEO this year and how to drive more quality traffic to your website. Feel free to reach out to me. Have my contact information here. Like I said, if you have any questions at all, if, or if we could be of any service at all, feel free to reach out and we'll be happy to help. And we hope to see you all here next month on our webinar of the month. All right. Have a good day.